All right. Um, <laughs> so in seven minutes, um, I want to uh, address two things. I actually wasn't going to talk much about the special needs exception. I'm happy to do that during question and answers. But to talk about why is this a big deal? Why is this a big deal? And what I want to do in seven minutes is talk about a little bit of history and a little bit of psychology. So we tend to think of uh, Fourth Amendment issues as privacy issues. And they are partly privacy issues. But they're also about the freedom of movement, freedom of locomotion. And freedom of locomotion was not given a secondary place in the design of the Fourth Amendment. The original Fourth Amendment, 1791, part of the motivating force was that the Royal Navy was just grabbing uh, Americans off the streets to impress them into the Royal Navy, okay? You lose control over your freedom of movement, you end up losing control over a lot of your life. Um, but what I'm even more interested in, and that's never talked about in the case law, uh, about why this matters so much, why you need to care so much even about what look like petty indignities, is that the Fourth Amendment was applied to the states in 18th, via the 14th Amendment which was ratified in 1868. So search and seizure practices under slavery and reconstruction, I think, matter in deciding what the Fourth Amendment means today. And what defined slavery? Part of what defined slavery was control of freedom of movement. Slaves needed passes if they were going to be walking about. Um, the slaves could be stopped for no reason whatsoever. What's little commented upon is that one of the initial abuses that led to the Fourth Amendment was, were general warrants, warrants that basically said you could search and seize anyone for some broad set of purposes. Well, um, the, the, uh, the slave patrollers actually had to take exams uh, about search and seizure law, and once they did that, they got general warrants that authorized them to go about and to, uh, to stop uh, slaves who were out and about, who might be going to see family at another plantation, who might be going to a religious service, um, and they would be humiliated, and they would be harassed, and they would be abused. Um, this happened to whites too, though. It happened to white sympathizers, abolitionists, who were, uh, because of their views, were ridden out of town on rails, or they were banished, their freedom movement was interfered with. And in the debates over the 14th Amendment, the interference with freedom of movement as central to Fourth Amendment rights was debated and discussed. Now, um, I'm not comparing what Metro wants to do to slavery. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is simply that freedom of movement has long been recognized as an important component of Fourth Amendment protections. And even when it is a small interference with your freedom of movement. It is a temporary interference with your freedom of movement. And to uh, elaborate on some of Mike's points, when you're stopped in the subway, what, what's usually happening? You might be rushing to go to your job. Maybe you're going to be late to your job. You might be rushing to apologize to your wife because you did something to annoy her and you think it's really important to get this over with as quickly as you can. You might be rushing to pick up your kid who is waiting for you at daycare and wondering, where is mommy? Where is daddy? What's going on here? These are not small things. These can be very stressful and upsetting uh, things. And when you see no reason, no justification for these things, I just realized, I was looking at that clock and it's not working. Whoops. Um, uh, it, uh, um, it, uh, when you look at these things, um, you're going to wonder, does race affect why I've been picked out? Am I being bothered for no good reason? Why am I in front of all these people who are going to think I've done something wrong? This is not minor. This is not a petty indignity. Now, how does that um, hook up with the, what I want to talk about with psychology? Well, um, uh, the truth is, even when police are acting based on some suspicion, reasonable suspicion, probable cause, they make mistakes, large numbers of mistakes. And they make mistakes when they're acting in good faith and trying to do the right thing. And why do they make mistakes? Because police are people too. And police and people make mistakes. And what is, there have been psychological studies done that show the kind of mistakes. So for example, individuals, including police, vary in their ability accurately to judge whether something suspicious is going on. They vary in their ability to tell whether someone's telling the truth. 
They vary in their ability to read faces. They, uh, in, with race and suspicion, um, there's a fascinating experiment that was done with some police. So they showed to the police um, a video. Not clear any crime was going on, just a video of certain events in the video. Then after the video, they gave the police a little speech about something, and two control groups. One group, the speech uses crime-related words, violence, assault, attack. The other speech didn't use those words. Then they did a photo lineup to pick out who did this, right? The police who were primed with the crime-related words picked out the offender as being black, and the police who were not primed with crime-related words picked out the offender as being white. By the way, the offender was purposely chosen to be as racially ambiguous as possible. Um, so you can see that very small things, even in the well, most well-meaning of police, can affect their uh, perceptions about, um, about race and about uh, suspicion. Um, building on this, there, there can be self-fulfilling prophecies. There are lots of reasons that someone, uh, for example, you might be stopped, you might think race is involved, or you're rushing to get home. You get annoyed. You're a little terse with the police. Police interpret that behavior as, ah, you're trying to hide something. Otherwise, you'd be nice to them. So you must be hiding something. So they get more aggressive, they push harder, that leads to police mistakes, it leads to police errors, it leads to duly aggressive uh, police techniques, and it adds to the level of humiliation. Um, so long and the short, I'm sure I must have gone over my seven minutes. Um, I'm not poo-pooing the concern about terrorists. Uh, my wife rides the subways every day. Uh, she, when 9-11 happened and I couldn't get in touch with her for several hours, I was in a panic. Um, I, uh, I worked in a National Academy of Sciences committee on stopping bomb blast terrorism. The, f the threat is real, but these kind of searches do nothing to address that threat, but do a lot for public relations purposes to uh, impinge on uh, the liberty of local motion. Thank you. Thank you, Professor.